I just wanted to check. Okay. Um, okay, so um, yeah, let me make one more adjustment actually. Um, yeah, okay, so um, should, uh, should we start? Uh, if that's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Right. Um, so, um, then, so yeah, this so this this lecture is uh, there's nothing absolutely nothing original about it. In fact, it's a material that's uh, it's it's um, uh, it's about a subject that was developed for 30, 40 years ago. So, uh, but but it's inspiring for some some things that one can can do new things that one can do in in a different direction. So it's sort of it's some sort of perfect. Uh, uh, it's just an example where everything works perfectly. So then it's worth kind of keeping in mind. That's why I want to go over it. So um, so let me start and let me, I'll, I'll, I'll share. That's okay. I just, I checked before, hopefully this this is okay. Because Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, so we'll do the following. We'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just some basic uh, geometry, basic um, tools that we need from the geometry of a, a, bi a billion varieties. Sorry, Lina, to stop you. I'm Zura. Sorry? I just, to, I just wanted to say the audio was not working, so that's why I didn't introduce you. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, let me just remind the participant that this will be a lecture series on modular spaces of sheets. And the speakers initially will be Alina and Lothar, and this is the second talk. Also, I put in the chat uh, a link where you will be able to find the recordings of the talks that happened uh, in December, and you will also find the next one there. So, sorry for the interruption, and uh, go on. We are happy to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Julia. Thanks a lot for organizing and for, for putting everything together. So yeah, sorry for the slightly um, um, disorganized start here on my part. So, uh, but we'll we'll follow the following. Uh, we'll go through the following. So first, just some geometric preliminaries. Then we're going to talk about the Fourier Mukai uh, transform. Then we're going to um, discuss the um, um, the Chow decomposition. And we're going to talk about the SL2Z action. And finally, hopefully we're going to get to this. In, um, finally, the SL2Q action. Okay, so this will, that's, this will be the plan. And um, we're um, here, you know, the main, well, I guess the main um, actors developing this subject were, you know, it starts with Mumford and then also, um, you know, goes through Mukai, Boville, uh, more recently the Dutch school, so Moonan, Polishchuk, etc. And, and in this talk, uh, we'll essentially follow Mukai and Boville in terms of um, uh, just the basic exposition. So let's uh, so let's start, and please feel free to interrupt at, at any time. Okay, it's not uh, uh, it's it's good to clarify things as we go. So um, yeah, so let's so A will be a principally polarized abelian variety. of dimension G, okay? And we're thinking about this over the complex numbers. And so L is the principal polarization. So it's an ample line bundle on A. Okay, and so here principal, the space of sections is one dimensional. And this is the same as the holomorphic Euler characteristic, okay? Um, so, yeah, so actually it's not necessary to, uh, to restrict to the case of a principal polarization. I do it just because uh, it's just a little bit simpler technically and uh, but in a, in a kind of a, in a trivial way in a way. So what I, 
So I, I will just, uh, it's, so it's not in any way essential. Um, okay, so let me talk about some natural morphisms in this context we're going to use. So we have the, the addition map is important. Yeah, so here x, y, we call it m, goes to x plus y. And the fiber-wise version of it, which is the translation by x, let's say. Yeah, so this y here, y goes to x plus y. Okay, so that's one. And then for any integer n, we have a multiplication map. Okay, so here x goes to nx. And this n is of course an isogeny and um, it has degree n to the 2g, okay? Okay, so I should say also that just in a basic identity, of course, is it's a, if I, if you take a cycle, so any class alpha and you pull back and push forward by N, you get the degree of the, of the map times alpha. So for, for any alpha, let's say in the Chow class, so a cycle on A, okay. So, um, so these two operations up to this uh, multiplication by the, by the degree are inverses to one another, they are the pullback and the push forward by n. Um, so uh, I should also, mm, well, I will also have the assumption that actually I can phrase out that this L, this, the polarization is symmetric. This is not a, you can always do this. So in some sense, so in other words, it's pullback under minus one is, uh, is itself. Yeah. So, um, so it's a symmetric line bundle. Okay. Um, and so under these conditions, then if I pull back L under, uh, under N, then this is in fact L to the N squared. So this, this follows, this is, this is a formula of Mumford essentially. And an excellent, I mean, I, you know, depending on your familiarity with a billion varieties, but in any case, just an, an excellent reference to learn the subject is still Mumford's book on a billion varieties. Uh, so, so, so this is important. And if I, this, this will use this formula because we'll be interested very much in how um, um, either sheaves or, or, or uh, chow classes behave under this morphism, uh, the pullback under N and under the isogeny N. So, so this is important. And let's say that uh, we set the first churn class of L, we're, we're gonna call it theta. So this means that if, I, if we pull it back, this is N squared times theta, okay? Okay, something that we will use. Okay, um, so now, so this is as far as the essential maps, but so the second main point here, as we set the stage is the Poincare line bundle. Okay, so, so we have P on, a cross a hat. This is the dual abelian variety. Okay. Of course, this has the, the this Poincare. Of course, it's a universal object. So if you restrict to any A times a, so this is a dual abelian variety. This is peak zero. So you can view it as the group of line bundles with C1 zero on A. Okay. Uh, so if you restrict to A times a line bundle, so point which parameterizes a line bundle, this is actually isomorphic to the line bundle. This is the universal property. And also there's a normalization here that we, we use if you, so you have this property and then 
if you restrict to zero to the origin on A, this is, we want this to be the trivial sheaf on A hat. So this is a normalization. You can normalize this any way we want, but so with these, it's, it's sort of, it's unique with these properties. It's, the, it's a unique line bond with these properties. Okay. So what's immediate to see in terms of the interaction of the maps with the Poincaré is that if we pull back the Poincaré under the map, which is multiplication by N on the second factor, this is P to the N, okay? So the Poincaré line bundle pulls pulls back like this. And, and the way you check it is really, uh, it's really uh, fiber-wise. So you use the seesaw lemma. So, so it's use see, the seesaw lemma, which is extensively used by Mumford. So, you know, the two restrict similarly on the, I mean, restrict, I'm sorry, identically on the fiber, the pullback and the B to the end. So then it's, uh, this is easy to see. Okay, but um, yeah, so for our purposes, we're going to simplify things. We're going to always identify the dual abelian variety with, with A. So um, this is, the, I guess, the last thing we're gonna mention before we move on to, um, to start discussing the Fourier Mukai. So, so we will identify, um, a hat with A using the polar polarization using L. So this is <clears throat> Mumford's map. So this is the A to A hat. And here we send X to All right. So this is the identification. This is it's a line bundle of degree zero here of a first chunk class zero. And um, this is a group homomorphism and moreover, um, yeah, so this is um, this VL. So this is all, yeah, basically structural results that go back to Mumford. So VL is an isogeny if and only if L is ample. So it has a it has a finite dimensional kernel, and and if L is in a principal polarization, in fact, this is this is an isomorphism. Um, okay, and so under this, so we're going to work with so we want to work with the Poincaré on, on the product A times A, uh, not A times A hat. Um, so then we're going to use, in fact, for us the Poincaré. So we identify, and you know, you're gonna excuse the abuse of notation here. So we, we're gonna, the Poincaré on A times A will be simply the pullback. So we pull back under the Mumford map and of course the identity on the first factor. Okay, now we're gonna call this P as well. I just so we don't have a million names for it. Okay. And then important point which is sort of useful in, in, in calculations is that, um, again, it's easy to check. And again, you proceed here by the, seat, the same idea with the seesaw, that this Poincaré can be explicitly written then in terms of the polarization as follows. So it's pulled back under the multiplication map. It's very symmetric. So this really, it's immediate to check. So I leave it to you to, to check, but this is, this is the expression for the Poincaré and we're gonna use this every, it, it's, yeah. So this will, this will be used for us. Okay. So, so this kind of ends the preliminaries. This is a basic, uh, these are the basic objects. We're gonna work with the Poincaré line bundle and we're gonna work with these, uh, natural maps, uh, um, the multiplication by n, the addition map, and so on. Okay, so um, let's, um, let's get started with 
the Fourier, the Fourier Mukai functors. And here we're following Mukai. 1981 paper. So this is 40 years ago now, yeah. So uh, this is a, his classic paper, duality between DA and DA hat, etc. And applications with Picard to Picard sheaves. Okay, so 1981. Um, yeah, so we're just uh, you know we let's define the functor. It's just a functor with kernel the Poincare line bundle. So let's say that we fix projections from the product A times A. Um, so then F of alpha is Q star F tensor. No, I'm sorry, P here, Poincare. Yeah, and here everything is derived. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all it's it's the yeah. So you think of the derived push forward and so on. Um, derived tensor product and um, so so then the Mukai's main theorem is calculates the self composition of F. Yeah, so um, this, this kind of foundational theorem in the subject. So yeah, so up to this shift, so this is the theorem. So up to this, um, um, well, uh, so multiplication by minus one, there's just the composition is the identity up to a shift by, uh, by G places in the derived category, okay? So, so the main, um, so the main ingredient. So there's one. The theorem is, is is not hard. I mean, it's just a great way of organizing this. But there is the, the main ingredient with the geometric ingredient goes it goes in is this calculation of Mumford. So, well, in fact, I think it goes before actually before Mumford. So, anyway, so the main ingredient is to understand how to calculate the push forward of the Poincaré. Uh, line bundle, yeah. So, so the, the point is that. So I'll just say, I mean, I won't, I won't do the proof of this theorem, but I can tell you that once you have this ingredient, it's, it's, it's easy. So this is the skyscraper shift at zero shifted by minus g. Okay. So if you, um, uh, and and so what does this mean? Okay. So this means. All direct image sheaves are zero, except in the top dimension. Okay. And of course, in top dimension, you just have the structure sheaf at the origin, which in turn is based on the following fact that it's just a classic fact that the cohomology of a line bundle um, with C1 zero so so topological trivial topological trivial amount is trivial is zero for all i you know, because that's what that's uh, to calculate the push forward except uh, in the case when in the case of the trivial sheet yeah when it's obviously not zero yeah so for all line bundles which are non-trivial but topologically trivial on A, all the cohomology vanishes. Uh, for O, obviously this is not the case. And so that's why you get this, uh, this, this formula. That, that's exactly what the push forward of the Poincare line bundle calculates. And this is the, the, the main ingredient in, uh, in, in Mukai's theorem, okay? Yeah, so, now I should say this, we're gonna talk about it in, in a few minutes, a lot more, but um, um, I should say that using the churn character, you can view this F in Chow as well. So, on, or, or cohomology for that matter. So we can consider this F 
acting on sending the showering to itself. Okay, so, so then on this level, of course, this f of alpha is, is exactly as before. Here, instead of the Poincare, I have the churn character. It's a line bundle. So let's say that the first churn class is lambda of alpha, where here uh, lambda is the first churn class of the Poincare. Okay, so this is this is the transformation on on, on Chow level, and then of course if I write this, um, um, I, if I write Mukai's theorem in Chow, this is well this involution stays the multiplication by minus one, and the shift becomes a a sign, so it becomes minus one to the g, yeah, on the Chow level is that's so. Okay, so let me also state, and I won't prove these, but they, again, they're not hard. So the beauty of uh, this uh, result of Mukain is this whole paper that, that uh, got, the, got the subject started is that in fact, it's, it's just a very elegant way of organizing geometric information that sort of already exists in some sense. It was floating around. I mean, this, this result about the Poincaré about the, the cohomology of line bundles was 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 known, right? So, it, but it, it it gets organized very beautifully under the Fourier Mukai. Okay, so let me say that so this is two important properties here that of f that we have. Uh, there, well, and again here the main reference is really Mukai's paper is wonderful. This is wonderfully explained. So if you Take a product of two objects. This is, and the Fourier Mukai of that is the so called Pontryagin product of their images. Uh, shifted, there's a shift by G here. I'll, I'll explain immediately what this product is. And conversely, if you take the Pontryagin product and you apply the functor f, this is the product of their individual images. Okay, so here, uh, this is the Pontryagin product, is defined as the push forward under the, the addition map, uh, of the tensor product of the two sheaves on of the two objects on the two factors, yeah. So here, and so here you see you have a cross a, you have e one on the first, e two on the second, and this is m. Okay, so this is called the Pontryagin product. Okay, so the Fourier Mukai um, exchanges tensor product and Pontryagin product, yeah. And the second property that we will use is just uh, it, it it commutes in a sense with involution. So let's let me um, and this is what I want. Yeah. So let uh, I'm sorry. Within so let's say that we have an isogeny tau then applying F and then pulling back by the isogeny is the same as pushing forward by the isogeny and then applying F and vice versa. Okay. So in particular, applying F commutes with uh, pull back under uh, the involution minus one. So it's something that we'll use so we don't have to worry about the, which order you apply these in. Okay, so, so this is uh, the second, uh, uh, so these are the foundational, uh, we're gonna get to the action, but we need these foundational uh, 
results. First, and as I said, these two, these two properties of the, of the Fourier Mukai functor are actually not difficult. Again, it's, it's uh, well, some calculation, but it's not a long calculation. And there are some tricks, just slight tricks involved. And we'll do one calculation with one trick. So you get a sense if you have never seen this type of manipulations before. And we'll do it in a second when we talk about the SL2 action. OK, so let me now move on and um, discuss the, the Chow decomposition. Now we're in a position to do this. And then we'll finally get to these actions. OK. OK. Yeah, so this starts with Mukai's identity. So. But we're going to use it in in Chow. So we're going to write. So we're going to write the following. We're going to write that. We're going to write the formula for the identity means the diagonal, right? As a, on the, the identity as as an operation on Chow corresponds to the diagonal as a correspondence. So um, so here is what we how we write it. So the self composition of f up to these two things rather trivial multiplications here is the identity and we're, we're we're viewing this on chow now on chow level okay so that so that gives a formula then for the diagonal i can write the diagonal explicitly with diagonal this is the identity operator yeah so this is so this is a formula then in ch star of a times a so viewing so viewing these um functors as correspondence so this is a composition of correspondences and we we have a way to write the identity this is sort of comes out of mukai so, uh, so here let me make sure i have space well so there's nothing i have to this i have to carry these trivial factors here and in fact i'm oh, sorry Um, yeah, so this is just on the second, the minus one comes after you apply the functor. So in fact, if I write it as a corris in correspondence form, I have multiplication by one on the, so it's the identity on the first factor and minus one on the second. And now this is applied to all well, the composition of the two functors of F with F. So here is how I write it on Chow level. You just have a multiplication of their, the two churn characters. And you see here, this is pulled back. This lambda one, two is pulled back. So this is a, how do I, you read this formula? Well, this is a push forward from three copies of A. Yeah, so this lambda one, two is a class on the first two, lambda two, three. This is how you compose correspondences. And then of course I push forward to one and three, yeah, so very simple, okay? But so now I'm just gonna write this explicitly because what I want to understand is how, so you can split this up. This is a mid dimensional class, obviously the diagonal. So I can I can just write it explicitly. And if you want a little bit uh, an entry, kind of it's sort of a, a rather dumb thing, but it has a consequence. So. Here is what we're going to do. We're just going to write these exponentials out so that you see how this plays. So this is a sum. Oh, there's a push forward here. Let me. Uh, Okay, so I forgot there's a P13 here, push forward. Sorry, this, I should write this a bit nicer. It's, it's terrible. This sum, right, from I0 to 2G. Yeah, so these, these are, uh, Yeah, so 
Um, okay, so but so now, well, let's just write this a little bit one more time because we know what. So this minus one will just act on um, on the second on this guy. Um, uh, yeah, so this this will just act here because it it acts in fact on the third copy of A. If we move this inside, okay. So so in fact then. Um, um, yeah, so here we have, it's a, let's write it like this. So there's a sign that gets picked up here at the expense of just getting rid of this involution. So this is a combinatorial factor. Um, and then you've got this, Okay, so we haven't done really anything, but the point is that now, so I will give a name. So this, this term will just call this, this is a cl class in a mid-dimensional class in, 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 uh, in the chow of A times A and we're gonna call it Delta I. So what we've written, so then we've written this Delta as a sum of these Delta I's. And what's the reason why we're interested in this is that um, their eigenvalues, these delta i is the way we wrote them, their eigenvalues with, um, of the multiplication by, of the pullback by multiplication by n. So in fact, we have that if we pull back under one n, this is n to the i delta i. And this goes back to, you see, this n then acts in here, acts, acts on this copy. You see, acts on on this one, and as we we talked about how the Poincaré is an um, is an um, behaves nicely under under pullback by uh, under one n star, right? So this is exactly what this translates into. So um, okay, um, so so then it's also easy to see that these correspondences delta uh, are actually orthogonal. So if you compose two, you get zero for I not equal to J. And this is it then potent, so, okay. So, but then the conclusion is rather nice. So this is a, it's a very simple conclusion out of uh, Mukai's, uh, um, main theorem, um, namely this means that because we wrote the diagonal in this manner, we broke it up into, uh, into eigen correspondences for the operator, which is a pullback under one, one N. This means that every um, Chow class can, is written in fact as a linear combination of, of, of eigenvectors for, for, for N star. Yeah, so any, this is the conclusion and this is the Chow decomposition. And here, of course, we have Q coefficients. In fact, whenever we talk about the Chow class, it's always with Q coefficients because you see we have all these denominators floating around. So there's no, there's no other way to do this. Um, is written as a linear combination. of eigenvectors for n star. And namely in the, in the following way, of course, we, we, we just write using the diagonal being very, it's very elementary you now, I mean here. So <laughs> we intersect with the diagonal, we push forward. So, so then in fact, this is, this alpha is written as delta i. Oh, okay. Zero to g. Let's call this alpha i. So this. And because of the property of uh, um, 
this is an I, the, the, because of the property of delta I of the correspondence itself, when acting with one n and one n star, well, alpha is inert under this action because it's pulled back from the first factor. But overall, this this pullback then this push forward this alpha I, then is an eigenvector with eigenvalue. Uh, n to the i, okay? Okay. So, so, then, so then we have obtained that the Chow, the Chow groups decompose as a sum of eigenspaces for n star. And any n gives the same decomposition, right? It's completely clear from this. Uh, so, so this is the, the result of Beauville, sort of classic result of Beauville, and then refined on refined by Benninger. Okay. So one, one. So this is also plays a role for our SL2, so which is why I'm insisting we'll come together in end. But so let me then also note, so it's just a basic remark here that we're going to use uh, is that um, as a correspondence, we can write the multiplication by n star then, correspondence, we have that n star, is equal to the sum of these um, eigen eigen correspondences delta i weighed by n to the i. Okay. Um, so that's the first. And another way we could write this is. Uh, also, it's n star. Well, it's the transpose of the graph of multiplication by n. So here, just incidentally, uh, this is just multiplication by n. So you, it's just the graph is a mid-dimensional cycle in, in, in A times A. Um, and, and the transpose means that you're going, uh, you're, you're, um, pulling back from by Q and pushing forward by A. And if I'm looking at the correspondence itself, that's the push forward, this is standard. So gamma N is the push forward and the transpose is, is the pull back. Okay. And just the way, that's the way, I me mean, stick to the way Beauville actually writes this in terms of the decomposition itself. Let's say on on cycles of co-dimension p, well, by checking what's possible with with these with these delta i's, you'll see that in fact not all values, not all eigenvalues are actually allowed. Uh, well, well, actually, yeah. Okay, so. Um, so this, so the sum ends are, um, so the eigenvector uh, eigenspaces. So this is alpha such that this is again, Bovis notation, which is actually, yeah, it's pretty good. So we, it's just a slightly different way of labeling. Yeah, so, so here is the, the co-dimension also enters, yeah, so. So the interest in this Chow decomposition comes, I should say, um, so, so, so it's an immediate consequence of, of, of the Fourier Mukai functor, as we saw. Um, but it's it's a, it, it's a it's a testing the the Chow of an abelian variety is of a testing ground for these uh, sort of sort of this overarching uh, uh, bloch balinson idea, circle of ideas and conjectures. Yeah, so you want to check them on abelian varieties, and this is this was Boville's interest in, in it, 
as well. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so now I'd like to, uh, so this was the third part of what we uh, want to discuss. And now I actually want to move on and, and talk about these, uh, these actions finally. So we, we've sort of prepared the ground. I think we're in a good position now. Um, so let's talk about the SL2Z action first. Okay. So, So we go back to this, the basic, to the basic identity in Mukai's theorem, that if we self-compose F, we get this. Okay, so somehow with SL to Z, we're gonna focus on just, <laughs> we want this to represent an element of SL to Z itself, and which element would it would it be? So let me write the basic, basic generate sort of a standard presentation here for SL2Z. Okay. So these two, these two matrices generate, as is well known. And so of course we have this is the identity. So in fact squared is minus the identity. And um, of course, SD cubed is also minus the identity. Um, yeah, so you see, um, we'd like to essentially um, map S and we will to F. Okay, as a first, uh, to, to start defining the action, yeah? So then we're gonna worry about this T in a second. Um, and and that's, that's promising, you see you, but it's up to a shift, right? I mean, if I, um, yeah, well, so let's, let's go with it a little bit, okay? So, so let's say that we aim to, I should say that, let me, let me So we aim to produce a representation of SL to Z, so morphism into the um, group of auto equivalences of the derived category. And in fact, on the level of Chow and the automorphisms of the Chow of the Chow ring. And that's actually gonna be simpler, you know? So yes, we want to send S to F. And here is what we're going to attempt with T. T is gonna go simply to tensoring by the principal, by the uh, ample line bundle, the principal polarization, okay? And so then we do have that F to the fourth, if we, this is a shift by minus two G. So in the derived category, this is just up to a shift and Mokai notices this. Otherwise yeah, you have an SL2 action up to a shift. This can be made precise. I mean, you can actually say it more in, in more rigorous mathematical terms, but in, in, certainly in Chow, since this becomes a sign, it's okay actually, all right? So this is the identity, okay? Because it's minus one to the two G. So it's no, no problem there. But let's, um, so the one calculation I wanted to do is to actually check this relation. So. Um, I want to check that um, um, now if we compose F with the operation of tensoring by L and we cube this, this is all that there is to check, in fact. You get this, okay? So what I propose to you, we check this completely explicitly. And then we know we have this SL2Z action. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so here is what how we're gonna uh, we're gonna start. So so we get started here. So we're gonna start by observing. This is a crucial thing. We're gonna work a little bit on the Pontryagin product. So bear with me. So E is a random element in the derived category. 
and we're going to take the Pontryagin product with the polarization L. Okay, so this by definition this allows us to work a little bit actually in an abelian variety, which is kind of nice to do so. So this is what this is. Okay, by definition. But then what Mukai notices, so this is entirely Mukai's argument for this, uh, it's a beautiful argument. So this can be viewed in fact, in the following way, and I'll, I'll explain in a second, let me write it. So this M becomes a projection on the second factor, and this P2 becomes, well, we're gonna call it delta, and del this delta is a subtraction map. x, y goes to y minus x. Okay, so how do we understand this? Well, here is the trick, the Mukai trick. So we map, so we have the addition map here that we want to transform into a projection. And how do we do it? We use a map which sends x, y to x and x plus y. So this is an isomorphism. Let's call this m tilde. And now this, we project uh, on the second factor, this is a. Yeah, so, so then this m is actually the composition of P2 with this m tilde. This is the addition map. And you see under this, um, but upstairs you actually do have an isomorphism. So, so in fact, uh, um, you 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 obtain this uh, you obtain this um, uh, this second line here, yeah. And the reason why you want to pursue the second line because this looks a little bit like um, uh, it starts to look like a Fourier Mukai, right? I mean, you pull back from one. It's some. It's it starts to resemble the Fourier Mukai a little bit. If you pull back e from one. Um, uh, from from one factor in, in the end you push forward you twist with something and we're gonna um, see what this is in a second and you push forward via p p two oh actually I mean I I yeah I mean I yeah I mean a little bit inconsistent I used p and q before so but it's okay so it's not a big deal um, okay so now let's let's continue a little bit here so this this delta in turn. I don't know if this, it's not a hard calculation as you'll see in a second now. Well, this delta in turn is the composition of the addition map with just flipping the signs, right? I mean, changing the sign on the first factor. It's a subtraction map. So, oh, I'm sorry. So this, I'm sorry. So, so then that's what I wanted to say. So then of course, if I'm looking at the pullback, I can write it like this. Okay, so so then we're we're gonna work a little. So we have now this Pontryagin product. We managed to write it like this, and we're gonna continue to work a little bit on it. So well, I'm gonna. Kind of artificially pull this pull this out here, and then I have. So we're going to apply a minus one star to e, and we're going to undo it here. Um, and instead of delta, because of this formula, I'm just going to have a pullback under multiplication under the multiplication map. Okay. And this disappears now because we project on the second factor, this is, uh, this is irrelevant. So I can, this, this uh, pullback by the involution is, does not matter for us, it does not make a difference. And this is what we have. But now, okay, now we know though that we can write the pullback of the polarization or the multiplication in terms of the Poincaré bundle. This is the explicit formula for the Poincaré. 
okay? So we, we, we replace it here and so then Well, so one factor of L just comes out because we're pulling back and push it forward via P2. And here is what remains. Um, We have the Poincaré appearing explicitly, which means which this will be a Fourier Mukai. And from the first factor, we have minus one star E tensor with L again. Okay. Which means if I, so this maybe looks like you make, make it very complicated, but remember we have to produce an ST cubed. So, um, so, so, if, so we conclude so this is the final point of the calculation that uh, E Pontryagin product with L is in fact the following, is the composition of the following operations, tensor with L composed with the Fourier Mukai functor applied to what? Applied to again, tensor with L and um, minus one star applied to E. Yeah, so you take this test object E and you first apply minus one star, then you tensor with L, uh, then you apply F, then you tensor with L. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so you see already we have like a, a nice string here. Um, so now we're almost done. This was actually the, the um, maybe the harder, right? So now we apply um, F on both sides. And this produces a longer string. So you have F applied to the Pontryagin product. This gets transformed into a tensor product. Okay. And then the string here becomes longer. We compose at the end, we, we add one composition with F at the end of our string. Okay, so we, this is almost, so if you think about this, this is ST, ST we have here. Yeah, so then we have the right hand side. So we're almost done. Um, so let me, and the, the main point is what is this F of L? And, um, and again, this is easy to calculate that in fact, F of L is L inverse. Okay, so if you run, uh, the polarization through the Fourier Mukai, through the functor itself, you get the inverse. And this is just really by definition. So, you know, this is P2 star of, um, well, oh, and so this is P2 lower star of, Oh, I wrote this terribly. Uh, could, could you do a worse job? I'm not sure. Okay, so you just write definition. These, um, the pullbacks uh, under P1 give you nothing. So, so F of L, is in fact the pull pullback under P2 comes in front, and then you have P2 lower star of M upper star L. And then it's easy to see by using the same trick that we used before that this is in fact O. Okay, so you're really left with L inverse here. Okay, so just to say that this is an easy calculation. Okay, so where does this leave us? So we have. Um, yeah, so we're 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 done in, in in a sense. So here we so we conclude here with our with our calculation. We're at the following stage: that if you tensor with 
L inverse, because this is now uh, the Fourier Moncaiev L, and you apply F to E, this is the same as applying F, the, everything on the right hand side that we have, tensoring with L, applying F, tensoring with L minus one star. Okay, so now we just move to the other side and you see that you, you we have obtained, therefore, you, we obtain precisely the cube, right? I mean, we, we have that F composed with tensorization by L cubed. Um, well, um, we, so the, it's actually given exactly by what you have when you, um, yeah, so you're left with a minus G, okay? I think that's correct. Yeah, if you, right? So you move this to the other side, you have another fact factor of F, and you have a minus one coming from F squared, but you also have this shift by, uh, you have a minus one star coming from F squared, but you also have this shift by minus G. So this is almost right, yeah? Um, in fact, you would need, so this is what we deduced and this is the correct identity, but we actually need uh, we actually need also a minus one star there. Yeah, so we actually would need to be, to be equal to minus one star minus G, okay? And the fix to this is to, to change this F assignment uh, a little bit. So instead of assigning to S F, which this is a little bit off, you have to assign it F tilde, which is minus one star F. Because then out of, you know, since this is a cubic in F, you, you will actually get a minus one star, yeah? I mean, so this is the fix. So it's a, it's a slight fix so that the first, our first guess was almost uh, almost right, okay? And, and this is, uh, and this is you, you check that you have an SL2Z action, yeah? I mean, so, and it's a, it's a very simple, right? I mean, the S is, is actually the Fourier Mokai up to this very small twist. And, um, and T is just multiplication by the polarization. And yeah, I'm sorry, maybe this calculation seemed dull to you because it's this relation you, you have to check, but it's kind of uh, nice to check something because otherwise, you know, it's just sort of this dry thing. Where does this appear? You know, this ST cubed, how do you check it geometrically? And in fact, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's as, you, as you saw, it's actually simple to check. Yeah, so I mean, it's just good to do, to, to see one thing. So, um, yeah, but of course, you know, here it's up to shift, but in Chow, let me point out, and we, which is the level we're interested in, we, we, this, this calculation was in the derived category, but you, in Chow, in fact, um, uh, of course this shift goes to minus one to the G and everything is, everything is okay. So you actually have phi, an action of SL to Z on, the automorphism of CHA, where S goes to minus one star as the Fourier Mukai in Chow, um, and uh, T, but T is multiplication by the line bundle, um, but so which means that in, in Chow, this is multiplication by the churn character, so E to the theta, we said the first churn class. Is multiplication by e to the theta. Okay, and but I want to point out something else which is nice since we write, and then we're gonna well we'll see then what we do. We have a decision to make then. But um, if I write this matrix now, this is, I'm, I'm interested very much in this matrix, and this is um, I guess this is T S T. Okay the product TST. Well, then the, the calculation we did also shows us, shows us how this acts on the chow. Yeah, because we saw, so in other words, phi of this 
by our previous calculation, this is tensorization with L composed with F, tensorization with L. And in fact, co precisely composed with minus one star because in fact, S is not quite F, yeah? It's this composition. Okay, so, but we calculated this and this was in fact the first calculation we did and we said that this is actually taking Pontryagin product with L, yeah? This is <laughs> taking Pontryagin product with L. So it's, a, it's kind of a, beautiful picture here, right? So, I mean, this one, one, zero, one means that you multiply by take a tensor product with L is sent to tensoring by L and one, one, zero, one is sent to taking a Pontryagin product. With L. So it's just kind of a, it's an amazing thing. They were beautifully symmetric. Okay. Um, yeah, so now, I mean, okay, the hour is out, but uh, so I have, and I, I thought this might be a little bit hard to do in exactly one hour, but um, so the, the, so we, we have to, we can make a choice here. The reason why we'd like to extend this to SL to Q is because then we see also the Lie algebra. I mean, we want to understand also the SL2 triple and so on, no, Lie algebra level. So far, we're on a group level. So I don't know if it's not much, but I, I don't know, uh, you know, if you want to, we have two choices either to uh, stop now, and it's not a bad place to stop because we have the SL2Z action, and then we can just sort of complete it. Uh, and we can do this uh, in, a, in a future meeting, or I can, I can finish. This is gonna be, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, maybe less in fact. And so it's, it's entirely up to, uh, up to the audience basically, you know, I, I, I can do either. I say, maybe we can stop here and you can start next time with a recap. So. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So that, that would work very well, in fact, you know, because we're in a good place and we're sort of uh, kind of in the setup and in the setting and I, I can definitely do. And then it kind of makes sense because I want to talk about these left shots as so tools anyway, so we haven't done it, but, but we, we, we but we've... Maybe, maybe we have the time to go through these calculations. And so if people have questions, so this is what... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me stop sharing. Okay. So, and it's good to keep it to a certain, you know, yeah, not for, not for this to stretch infinitely. Um, but um, yeah, you know, so uh, I think we, we're, you know, so if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. But we're, I mean, we, so far we have an SL2Z action on the, uh, um, on, on the chow of, 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 an abil of this principally polarized abelian variety, which is given very simply, as you saw, the uh, one main player is the Fourier Mukai, and then we simply have the tensorization by the polarization here. And this is all in Mukai's uh, paper, yeah? So it's 40 years ago. He talks only, he's not interested in the chow level in that paper specifically, so he talks only on the derived level. Well, you, you have this shift, so it's not quite an action because of the shift. But basically, you know, this calculation is in, uh, which I presented the ST cubed is, is, in, uh, is, is, is in his paper. So it's actually a beautiful paper to read and still the best paper to read, I think, to understand this, you know. Um, yeah, so I, uh, as you saw, it's just not nothing. Um, yeah, that's, it's, I'm just sort of presenting Mukai's work. But we're gonna get to this, uh, to, to, to where it connects to something that's sort of, current, yeah, I mean, when we're looking at the left shed SL2 that comes out of this action. So this, this, this naturally accepts this um, um, uh, extension to SL2Q and then you, you're talking about the Lie algebra as well. And so, so, so it would be nice, but um, okay. So um, then I- uh, Thanks Alina for the nice talk. Sorry? Thank you for the very nice talk. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. It was, uh, yeah. And maybe uh, if people also online have questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then let's say we continue next week, right? 
yes, we'll 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 have to we'll have to confer on the exact schedule. But uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. But Wednesday is uh, this time is, is 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 a good time basically. So yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, for coming to listening to a very old, uh, yeah, kind of an old old topic. Yeah, it's not nothing uh, super original. In fact, there's nothing original, but it's a, be a beautiful uh, picture anyway. So, okay, all right. So, thanks very much, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll see you see you before long then. <laughs> okay, ciao. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>